Hey, Bayek. Today's video is going to be, yes, another review of classic Doctor Who. And this is Spearhead from Space from 1970. It was the first Doctor Who episode in colour and there's a few other things um, surrounding the importance of this episode. It was the introduction of the third Doctor played by John Pertwee. It was a revamp of the programme effectively right from the, the logo um, the introduction at the beginning, the theme tune, everything was um, new. It was all new here yeah, because, well, they were a revamping program. Let's put it like this. At the time, the program had certainly started, well, it had suffering from a rating slump. And with Colour TV introduced, it was felt that, well, they needed to get those ratings back up. And what a great opportunity. You had a new doctor. Now, um, the producer um, that was introduced um, at the time uh, was Derek Sherman. Sherwin, sorry. Sherwin. Derek Sherwin. Derek Sherwin had been involved very much uh, in the classic um, period of Doctor Who, the black and white era, very much involved in scripts and writing, uh, Galaxy 4, for instance, the, the, um, the important episode, The Tenth Planet, when the Doctor's first regeneration takes place. Also, he was involved in the classic e Evil of the Daleks, the Ice Warriors. And um, he went on, in fact, to be involved in um, Blake 7 and the Zed, Zed Cars, which were two very important series for the BBC at the time. Uh, so here he is, is basically for two um, episodes as the producer. The War Games which was the end of uh, the Second Doctor's period. That was a massive, you remember, ten-parter. He was involved temporary as the producer. And then he was the producer of this opening Third Doctor story. He was involved in the casting of John Pertwee. He was involved um, also in choosing Caroline John, who played Liz Shaw. She was the new um, assistant, um, and that was it. He was there to steer the program on, and he left after this episode and was then um, replaced by um, Barry Letts. Now, um, he was an important, well, very important part of uh, the direction that the Third Doctor would take. Um, but we mustn't forget the contribution um, made here by this producer. Um, the fact that he was here making this transition. Um, the importance of this episode here is, is interesting. Um, it was filmed in 16 millimeter film, the whole episode. That means, that's why it's on this Blu-ray release. It's the only story, single story that has been released on a single Blu-ray. Um, this, was because a writer's, um, well, a strike was 
taking place, basically. Not, um, and the whole story had to be filmed on location. Um, there was hardly any studio work done. And um, this has been to our advantage because it's got a film-like quality. Um, and um, as I say, we were able to upgrade it to um, Blu-ray. They have now, of course, releasing um, the, all the stories of this particular period um, and before now, of course, on Blu-ray. Um, but as I say, this was just a single one that they released and um, it was obviously easier to um, release like that, whereas now they've had to do a lot more work in uh, restoring and up upgrading them to up Blu-ray. But um, anyhow, after going off, let's talk about this story. Eh? Hey, let's talk about it. As they, it's an important story. And if you were new to Doctor Who, you could watch this. And... I've never seen any of the shows before and you immediately get to know the character. We see the TARDIS land following from um, the war games. The Doctor has been exiled to Earth and out he falls and there he is now with a new face and body. And um, he gets taken to the hospital um and that is going on and then um at this time there's a meteorite shower which is hitting the earth and contained in this uh, shower are these like i suppose you call them like containers which inside of a life form, yes. It's the Nestorine consciousness. And the story develops from this, how these take over a factory, which is all part of an invasion plan of Earth. Oh, yes. And then we see Unit. Yes, Unit now. Unit is going to be so important to the Third Doctor era. Uh, it was decided, I think, that because the stories would be earthbound, we were going to have, like, I thought, influenced kind of like by things like the Quatermass and all that kind of sort of thing, the threats to the earth, invasions and all that. And we'd already met the Brigadier, of course, and the Brigadier is the first piece of the unit family jigsaw, which is established in this story and of course the unit family then develops and we get to know other characters um from unit and um it becomes a very important part of the third doctor's um period uh, particularly this period um in his development and uh, stories and i think the important thing is that this revamp was also quite um well there was a lot on it really um there was certain pressures from the bbc who were not very pleased that the ratings had fallen to three to four million he <laughs> going three to four million nowadays that's 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 good then that was really disastrous. But the, the, the success was immediate. They were immediately getting, going to get up back up to 10 million people. 10 million, yes. And of course it went higher than that. But the success of John Pertwee, it was really an overnight success, effectively. Of the Doctor, he just seemed to fit in perfectly, saying new people perhaps that hadn't seen the Doctor for a while. It was just so easy to watch. And do you know what the secret is? There's a brilliant um, documentary on this Blu-ray, actually, is they asked him to play himself. What you are seeing is, well, 
it seems it's it's John Pertwee's character very much, and he he just fits as the Doctor brilliantly. He has this kind of sort of a bit more sort of action kind of hero um, about him, and he's uh, and as we see, he's all into this, and he's more what they call the dandy. As <laughs> he's, he's a lot more aware of his uh, in his costume that he. Uh, Gets, you can see it. He's he's very different in his dress style from the second Doctor, and he's he's just a different character. But yeah, he's not. He's the same. He's also got that humor. The humor's still there, but he's he's very much a different kind of approach. But um, he's still the same Doctor in there, and this is what the development of Doctor Who is all about and John Pertwee was very much important in establishing various other parts of the Doctor's character as we know um, throughout the period um, it's interesting as well I loved like at the end of the year, and he calls himself you know because the Brady asked what shall I call him he said he calls himself Doctor John Smith yes Dr. John Smith and Dr. John Smith was first referenced in the Wheel of Space episode nine or six part story by the second doctor uh, in 1968. Um, so we see that continuity, but that has carried on throughout st being called John Smith. Uh, so there it is. Just thought I'd throw that in for you. Um, the, this 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 episode really is just perfect, a perfect introduction to um, Doctor Who, and of course to the, the new Third Doctor, and um, it's just wonderful the way he interacts with everybody in the cast, and we see the brilliance already of the Doctor, and what is interesting as well is because his new assistant is um Liz Shaw played by Caroline John brilliantly um and she in many ways is just as brilliant as he is maybe obviously he's the doctor therefore a bit more brilliant but um this is another interesting take on the character they were looking for somebody I think um who was very much his equal and was not just a screaming assistant. Unfortunately, I think it is rather sad that um, the new producer wanted, I think, somebody, again, back to more of the traditional role of the assistant, because um, they didn't want the show to be about Doctor Who and his assistant. They wanted it to be about Doctor Who. But that philosophy changed and developed but it meant that they didn't um give caroline john any longer than one um one season though she did become pregnant so she wouldn't have been able to um do the role anyhow but uh then um joe grant's character is very different but she develops as well. But there's always has been this thing, I think, with assistance in Doctor Who. Um, um, and we got it, of course, with Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane was very much, uh, very much her own brilliant self, independent um, character. Uh, and of course, we saw it. I mean, the Doctor, when we get female Time Lords is very much, you know, with Romana, um, is into actual equal. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, we've got this, we've already, of course, is importantly got the concept of female Time Lords, which again just shows that, of course, the Doctor can become female and it took quite a few years for that to happen. But of course, it was actually actively discussed um, after the fourth Doctor um, and his regeneration. 
Anyway, I'm going off the, off again and rambling on, but <laughs> as I normally do. Uh, who else is in this story? Well, we've got obviously Nicholas Courtney as uh, the brigadier. Uh, we've got Hugh Burden playing, I suppose you could say, the villain uh, linked with the Nestorine um, consciousness. He plays a character called Channing, who's virtually controlling the uh, factories, taking over it, and so that they can produce. Uh, these uh, so-called mannequins, which are the autons, which will um, house the Nestorine consciousness and a part of the invasion plan to create and replicate all leading like politicians and leading government figures and the are in the army and you know, all that kind of thing. This is all part of the invasion plan. Anyhow, Channing is played by Hugh Burden, who has got a nice uh, link here with um, Hammer. He's in the um, Blood from a Mummy's Tomb from 1971, which is a, a, another great uh, mummy story. I like that. Um, also, another character in... in He's not in a very big role, but he's... Um, Tefron Thomas, Tef I think that's how you write it, Tefron Thomas, he's a Welsh actor, he was, and um, he pops up in The Green Death um, as quite an important character in that, and The Green Death is one very important story, it's the end of Joe Grant's, and um, it's a great story as well, very... Uh, political in many ways, e ecological... Um, a very important story. Yeah, just uh, that's just made me think as well. Um, the um, story is written by the wonderful Robert Holmes. Who Robert Holmes is going to become the script writer, um, editor as well. Uh, but he wasn't the script editor on this. Um, um, Terence Dix was, and Terence Dix is another brilliant contributor. And writer, he was a script editor, but Robert Holmes would become the script editor as well. Um, both great writers, both important, pivotal uh, writers to the whole of these eras of the third and fourth doctors. Excellent. Um, I think also it's important when you look at this story to see, um how good and important a script can be and how it affects the whole, you know, if you get a good director and a great script, you're on to an absolute winner. And um, this is what happened. Um, I think that is a, a real important lesson in this era throughout really is the script the quality of the scripts and this story has that undoubtedly it has that um what we have with this story i think is showing you how good the doctor the classic doctor who really was and this is just the beginning and if you're new to classic Doctor, this is another good place, a good episode to actually watch um, because you've seen that real transition from the old into the new. And what better way than watching this? If you know nothing about Doctor Who, you could watch this and you learn a lot. As I did in my previous um reviewing the fourth doctor so I, hopefully i'm helping you get an idea of how good these classic stories are and they are absolutely spot on you know you they're exciting they're wonderful they're of the era yes but they're um i think the important thing about these stories is though they are of a different era to some extent. They're not as different as you think. And 
don't forget the um, 2005 introduction Rose episode. What story did it strongly reference? This. Because we saw the that wonderful scene with the mannequins in the shop bursting out. And there it was. Russell T. Davis introduced it into Rose as well. A real fitting tribute. Absolutely. You know, and that is all to this story. You know, so that is the importance of this story. Recognised and that oh, this old era of unit is just so important in that when I use that word family, I think that's what Doctor Who is actually about as well to some extent. It's the family of people that the Doctor collects together. And that is always emphasised, have you noticed that? Because the Doctor is very much on his own through various uh, times for various reasons we know that he is not with his family and it's important that he, I think, has that around him. And that's what he does. And or she, he or she now. That is what the Time Lord does. He kind of wants the family around him. And he creates that with his companions and the people he's involved with. And that's, that's Doctor Who, yes. <laughs> um... I hope I've really given you an idea that you may want to watch this. <laughs> it would be great. I, uh, it's just such a great story. Great ending um, as it progresses. It's four episodes long and you just never get tired of it. It's easy to watch and so good as well. You love it, honestly. You cannot help but love this. I'll just give you an idea. Um, I've got... Another two copies. I've got the original release of, on DVD of this story. This was the third um, story released on DVD in January 2001. If you remember, um, we had the Five Doctors first release. Um... And then after that, we had The Robots of Death. That was the second release. And then this was the third one. And um, though, um, again, the special features weren't as big on these earlier episodes. It's still, it's still great. You can pick this up probably all over the place very cheaply. Yeah. Though that uh, Blu-ray is not such a bad price from what I've seen as well. That can be picked up quite cheap. Then, inevitably, um, there was a remastered special edition. This came um, in a box set uh, with The Terror of the Autons, which is the second Nestorine story, uh, which comes up um, in Joe Grant's um introductory story um and it was anyhow we they they really put this in a box set with that and this was with a lot more special features and well, it's, again it's a wonderful uh, there it is that's the uh, second one um and of course then as i said we got this one um brilliant Absolutely brilliant. Well, what can I say? I'll just say, hey, well, that's it. And I may well do more. And I think I will do more. I enjoy looking back at the classic Doctor series. And let's hope that some of you may be encouraged to watch some of these episodes and explore further. I'm just sort of pointing you into the direction. You know, just getting there. Anyhow, if you're interested in these videos, subscribe i always point up there and there's no there but it says subscribe and then if you like it please give it a like it really helps a lot and it costs note it costs note that's it um 
So all I've got to say is, I'll see thee, and I'll see thee again.